All right, what's up, everybody? We are here on the couch, and we're getting set to review the challengers. But before we get up into that, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow the couch on all platforms. The Parker's, Parker's Couch is on TikTok. We um here on YouTube, YouTube Shorts. We also have our podcast. The next podcast will be on Friday. So look out for that on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all the things, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you may be listen, listening. We're happy to have you and join us. So we're gonna get into some reviews. And as I said, we're gonna review challengers. I recently saw the challengers film starring Zendaya. Yes, this is a grown, grown movie. All right. So if you're going in, don't be looking for the old kitties in there you might be used to or the one easing into things. But no, this is grown, grown Zendaya showing the booty and everything. All right, Zendaya. And she was looking fly, 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 fly. But the movie has a lot to get into. I will let you know my review by the end of this little review to let you know what um my official score for it is but let's get into it and i'm gonna pull up um the imdb page so let me go ahead and share with you here so challengers as said here is about tashi a former tennis prodigy turned coach who turned her husband into a champion but to overcome a losing streak He needs to face his ex-best friend and Tashi's ex-boyfriend. So definitely juicy right there. As you can see, we are involved in some little love triangle here. Now, from the previews, you knew that there was some kind of triangle going on. Me, myself, I didn't know how the movie was going to flow or go. But I'll just say it, it's done in a style I wasn't expecting. It's not a style that's like not been done before, but it's, it's told through flashbacks. So you're starting off at the scene whenever the two friends or former friends, they're facing off each other in a challengers tournament, which if you're a tennis fan, that might sound strange to you because if one was turned into a champion, why is he playing in a challengers event? But you find out through the movie like his struggles, what's been happening and whatnot. But they're in this uh, Challengers event and facing off against one another. And they start to, you know, play their match. And the movie proceeds to be told in a series of flashbacks. Sometimes it's 12 years before. Sometimes it's eight years before. Sometimes it's a few days before. Sometimes it's a week before. So you just got to pay attention to what's happening. It's not chronological. Um, even in that, in the flashbacks of storytelling, they jump around. So I, I, but I thought it was well, well done. Before we get into movie, let's just see like who's all involved in it. So director is Luca Guad- Guadagnino. Hope I said that right. Um, and he is known for "Call Me by Yeah, Call Me by Your Name." That's one of his probably the most famous one that he's known for. Here they also say known for Bones and All. I haven't seen that one. Um, Suspiria and A Big Splash. But Call Me By Your Name, which, you know, that received some awards and things of that nature. He has 36 wins as far as um, awards and 87 total nominations. And also was nominated for one Oscar. So he is involved in the film as the director. Then as the writer, you have Justin... Karitskis, that's what we're gonna go with. <laughs> Karitskis, I guess. And I, I, I think well, he's a writer, actor, and producer. It says here, so he's known for obviously Challengers. Now everything else is he's not really known for. So this seems like fresh and new for him. Even as an actor, it's only two things listed here in 2007 and 2013. So he's not really that known like on a on a wide scale like that so this is a great opportunity and a big thing for him and um i i go ahead and tell you i i did enjoy this the script one thing i did enjoy about the film and the writing itself is that i felt like we were kind of in this funk of movies you know everything is about a war about the holocaust now about racism about you know all these things like which 
are fascinating topics and they're movies that need to be made and movies I definitely enjoy. But sometimes you just want something different or something's always a remake. You know, people are just it's hard for people to be original these days and going out remaking things. I felt like this script was very, very fresh. And um, it was it was just a, 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 a cool story there. So props to you, um, Justin, right there, because you 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 did a great job, in my opinion. Now, the stars are Zendaya, who plays Tashi, um, Mike, Mike Fast, who plays um, Art, Donald, who is married to Tashi, and then Josh O'Connor, who plays Patrick, who was the ex best friend and ex-boyfriend of Tashi. So all the characters are there in play. One thing I do like, like Zendaya is a star. We all know, undeniable. Um, definitely the stardom is going to continue to rise for her. Um, the, the next two players we have with Art, the character who played Art, Mike Foss. He is known for West Side Story, mostly. But he might have a Tony. Or I don't know if he's just a Tony nominated actor or if he won a Tony for um, West Side Story. But they also have here Atlantic City Story and Wowling. Never seen those, but saw he played Riff in um, West Side Story. So that was a big movie and stuff for him. And this is a Nets big thing there. And here's some of his other projects you, you might see here on the screen. Nothing that I don't think the average person would be super familiar with. So this is something more to put him on the map. And Josh O'Connor, let's take a look at his IMDb real quick. He played Patrick, and he has been in, oh, yeah, um, The Crown. He plays Prince Charles in The Crown, um, 13 episodes there. People probably know his face from there. And God's Own Country, I don't think I saw this one, um, but I, I remember reading that description on that, and it seemed something interesting. So I don't know if he, because that one is a queer film. I don't know if he is a queer um, person in real life or at the but or just has that and this movie has it has some there's a queer elements to it i'll put it that way and things that happen there's nothing like that's right bam in your face or like it's the focus of the movie but there are things that are happening that help kind of create and tell the story as well so that's what he is known for in case you all are wondering so now the film like i said it starts off it takes place right uh, starts off right there whenever art's character and patrick are facing off in this challengers event and so whenever they start to retell the story of what happened you you see this beautiful friendship between them they were doubles partners um, they were coming up in the juniors of tennis. They were nicknamed Fire and Ice. So they were known and stuff to the crowd. Patrick was the better player um, than Art. And, you know, it's this the scene whenever, and I try not to have too many spoilers, but I'm going to be kind of recapping the film and I try to be careful. So let me just, I just go ahead and say there might be some spoilers. So hopefully you don't get too mad at that. If you plan on seeing it, or if you're one of those people that don't want to know, but um, so fire and ice, they're they're getting set, and they have to play each other in the championship of this tournament in the juniors. And Art is telling them, please, you know, let me win. My grandma's gonna be watching. You know, take it easy on me. This sort of thing. It's clear that Patrick is the better player here. Um, the boys they get together and they go to watch a match, and that's where Tashi. Is playing. She's a 19 year old phenom, and Tashi gets out there and handles business against this girl Anna Anna Muller. And you can see both of the boys are so infatuated. They were talking about this party, this Adidas party that's going to be going on that she's going to be at. And Patrick was trying to convince Art to go. And at first, Art is kind of like, ah, uh, you know, he doesn't really know. He isn't really feeling it. But after watching Tashi play, because Patrick is like, you haven't seen her. 
and just seeing how beautiful she was and then just how fierce she was on the court and the tenacity in which she played with, he was in love from the start. So both of the boys are like in love with this girl. But it's almost, you can see, what I think the movie does a good job at is like painting clear pictures of the characters. So Patrick is like, he's like that quote unquote bad boy, um, don't really have ambitions in life, type thing just kind of like wants to do things to, to be quick he wants to flash the fame um he doesn't really want the hard work and what it takes and stuff to get there and then you have art who is very calculated who's um you know very precise who's about his craft but boring i mean he's like he doesn't have like that passion that you kind of like really want you know and he's kind of like a um a suck up in a way um especially to tashi <laughs> i mean he he he's just like one of those guys that's like a follower and just do any and everything that you say and is looking for guidance but you know and he but he's in love and stuff with her and tashi is how would i describe zendaya to me tashi's role so both of these guys art and patrick are like boarding school rich kids they all come from that pedigree. Tashi is not from that same pedigree. And they make that clear. Even whenever they meet her and stuff at this party, um, you know, she it's like, oh, yeah, you know, y'all are boarding school, school kids and yada, yada, yada. She was like, even if I could get the scholarship to go there. So you see, she has to have scholarships to even do that. So she's not in that class. She was like, my parents still wouldn't send me away. You know, and the boys are kind of like, why? And then she's hitting, you know, because they don't want me out there having sex with y'all boys. <laughs> and so, yes, that's why that's not happening. But she is a go-getter. Like, she is focused, tunnel vision. Everything is about the game. It's about sports and stuff with her. And she sees this not only as an opportunity that's going to bring her family and stuff out, but it, it's just her whole life. Everything is built around tennis for her because it's kind of like a savior, which is, you know, that is true for a lot of people in athletics who are coming up out of, you know, and it does. I never got the picture that she was like poor, but she just wasn't rich. She just wasn't that average kind of boarding school student. All right. So the boys are there. The party goes on and everything. Long story short, I say they the, the first meeting you kind of see in the trailer when they're in the hotel room and stuff together. And that was an interesting scene. <laughs> I wasn't sure how. I was like, is she going to have a threesome with these boys? You know, what's getting on from the previews. But let's just say they eventually get there and get into it. And she kisses art first and then she kisses patrick and then they're both kissing on her then they start kissing each other so that's one of the little um queerness parts and stuff that's there and she is um she's just watching but she gets up and leaves and stuff after that but um she makes a thing to them at first all this is all fun so right now because i'm like how did the boys get become not friends anymore and i'm gonna let some of that i'm not gonna tell you everything but she um says a, a says to them whoever wins tomorrow can have my number because they're both competing for her they both want their number they both make it known that they both are into her and she is like well whoever wins the match can get my number so that little friendly friendly stuff kind of went out the door and now the boys are mm, competing i don't know if i should tell y'all who wins i just say one of the boys wins well i guess if i read you could kind of figure it out from reading the summary and stuff who wins there who's the ex-boyfriend and who she's married to and stuff now so yeah i just say patrick he does win and stuff then and so she ends up with patrick for a while and things are really interesting with the way art begins to move whenever she's connected to patrick let's just say he's doing dirty he's like that nice guy who everybody thinks is just so nice and uh put together and things like that who is really a devil in sheep's clothing 
right there. Um, he is playing little sleep, little seeds, and he's playing the long game. And they kind of hit towards some things about his character and, and how he plays percentage points and stuff in tennis and how calculated he is and how he's just waiting for someone to make a mistake. Um, and baby, he was ready to pounce whenever those mistakes and stuff happen. Uh, that the I did enjoy, there's a scene with um, Zendaya and Patrick, well, Tashi and Patrick, whenever they're dating and she's in college, she decides to go to college and her and Art both go to Stanford. And he comes to visit and this is before she blows out her knee that y'all see in those previews. I was dreading that part, by the way. I cannot stand knee injuries. I was just, I knew it was coming just from the previews and when the scene was happening. And I was just bracing. And when it happened, oh, I'm just getting queasy thinking about it now. But it was, it just was so real. It looked real. Um, the way they did the knee, all that. The so oh gosh, I'm I'm just about to lose it and now lose it again thinking about that. But anyway, before that happened, her and Patrick got in a, a big fight, and they're um, you know, they're getting hot and heavy. But then she's talking about tennis, and he's like, "Can you stop talking about tennis?" And she's like, "Everything is about tennis." And they're getting into the stuff in their relationship where um it's kind of like a battle between him and art but then also she's talking about tennis but is she talking about them and their relationships i'm not going to tell you like what happens in this argument but i just thought it was very well done the way that they continue to tie in tennis to life and relationships and what's happening here and i think it's very real like whenever we get into relationships in life and the way work can take over and goals and things of that nature and kind of the line that that plays and when it's too far and, you know, all these things. So it was interesting, but they have a blow up. That's what I'm going to say. And then she has the knee injury. And because of the blow up, Patrick decided not to come to the match and support her. So she has this life uh, uh, career ending knee injury and, you know, it's down and out. And then he rushes back and tries to see her and both her and Art like yell at him to kind of get the F out type thing. So that's when the ripples really begin and stuff. And you can see um, everything going downhill. Patrick is an interesting character in the movie because he's this grungy. You see him now in the old age, like he goes pro early on, but he sucks pretty much because he doesn't put in the work ethic. He doesn't have that. And, but he lives this kind of like fake poor life you see him not being able to pay for things, sleeping in his car, remarks that he smells, all this stuff. And you're like, why are you doing this? Because you he's rich. He just doesn't want to be on his parents' board. He doesn't want to use his family money, that sort of thing. You never know what his family does, but there it may be something tied into politics and stuff that kind of gives some innuendos about that. But um he just live and he like matches with people on Tinder just to um sleep at the houses to have a place to to lay his head and all these things. Um it it's just very interesting the way that he chooses to live. So Art and Tashi, you know, they end up getting married, they have a kid, they all this stuff and living a life, but he is you can tell he's not enjoying tennis, he's had an injury himself but he's able to bounce back from it you can see tashi living her life through him in the relationship their relationship was nothing it was just purely tennis and it was kind of like i felt like she was living her she was definitely living her dream through him and he was that vehicle since he was one who was going to take it serious and can you know get up there to some winning status i felt like she jumped on that train with him and he was always so into her. And I felt like that her being desired like that was just icing on the cake. You know, someone Tasha gave me that that girl that she want she wanted those eyes on her. I think Patrick said something about how you just want a Tashi fan club type thing. Yeah, Tashi, you wanted that. You wanted that Tashi fan club and stuff. And you just didn't and Tashi didn't allow herself to live in the hurt of that knee injury and what it did she just pivoted 
right away and and you know she's just one of those people that's very headstrong um what else can i say i don't want to give too much away from y'all i would say that the movie what i did enjoy too it was the way that it is shot um the scenes the tennis scenes uh going on they they were incredible to me like it was intense um it, it looked real a lot of it i mean you could tell the cgi type things happening what's happening but i wonder what kind of training went into this because then they was looking like a tennis player and the rest of them like they were they were doing it and the tennis is a sport that i enjoy so i love the way that it bounced between tennis and life even with the sets because the first the first set patrick wins and so it's like all the flashbacks in the stories is kind of like Patrick winning and stuff and, and his highs. Then the second set, Art wins. So then it's like those relate more to Art and his winning and um, getting Tashi and all these things. Um, and then it's like back and forth in the final set. And they even get to a tie break. And the tie break is very interesting. There's a lot of, I guess, a, a lot of things to make sure you watch for and pay attention to in a movie to make sure you catch the ending and what's happening. I'm not going to spoil it for you. There's certain signals and things that happen um, that signify understanding between the guys of what has taken place and what has happened. And it makes for an interesting ending. I'm curious how people feel about the ending after they see it because for me, now I've, I've seen, a, I, I stayed away from reviews before the movie, but I've seen a couple of stuff afterwards and people are kind of divided even as far as the characters. For me, as far as the characters, like I thought it was very well done, very well written, the acting was great. I have no complaints. But for them as people, I say they can all go in the garbage. I am not a fan of Tashi. I am not a fan of Art. I am not a fan of Patrick. They are all very flawed individuals, which we all are in life. We all have our flaws. But their flaws are flaws I do not want in a relationship. <laughs> it is no way. And she, and let me tell you, she might be with Art, but is she still bouncing back to Patrick? There are some things that happen. That's all I'm going to say um, within that. And it is dirty. And some of the stuff she pulls is is dirty, is is low down Tashi, and you can tell she really desired and wanted to be with Patrick. It, it's like when you have whenever you going after the wrong person because Patrick is not the right person. First of all, I don't know if Patrick is truly if he's just bisexual or if he's um gay who knows and just didn't want to go there that's kind of like left you know unknown i don't even know if him sleeping with women is really what he truly desires or he could just be like bisexual there's one part you see him even swiping on tinder and a guy comes in his twinder tinder and he swipes right too but he kind of pauses and then does it you know so it's this and i'm like are you just not able to process some things right now or are you truly bisexual but she desires him more like she wants him she even remarks about how he has a bit dick you know type thing and stuff like that so she said it seems like the sets was definitely better and stuff with patrick and she can't shake him but he is just a shit guy like he's just not good so sometimes it's hard to put that away from people and you know you still go after that but on the other hand, even though art seems all put together and all this, and he's going to be that guy that's going to always be there, be loyal, be supportive, be all these things. But there's no fire. There's no passion. There's no. And he's really sneaky. And he kind of started like all this stuff between them, really. Um, it, truthfully, art. It, there should be a lot more against art to me in this film um, in critiques and how y'all feel i'm just curious what y'all think as far as the movie but i would say my rating to go ahead and wrap this up we throw up wine glasses 
here on the Parker's Couch because, you know, you got to enjoy your your wine while you're sitting here and, and watching your films, watching your TV shows. I'm going to give it four wine glasses. Four wine glasses out of five. Four out of five for me. It was it was um, a really solid film. The ending kind of took, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie, the ending kind of took it down for me some. Like, I like what they did as far as, like, the clues and what happened. And you see the transformation of these guys who became enemies. And it was, I still wasn't even sure why they truly hated each other. And Patrick even tries to get to that. And our, like, I don't know, it's, 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 you got to kind of like piece that together. The certain ways you can go with that response of why you think they really didn't like each other anymore had this animosity, but they kind of get that old connection back. I say that at the end. And they're in the tie break. We only see one tie break point, And then we, there's interesting reactions from all three of the characters, how the two guys act and then how Zendaya Tashi acts um, on that last point that we see. And I'm just going to leave that there. But there's just a lot left open in the end. And maybe that's the point to leave some things open. People have these open interpretation endings all the time in movies it seems to be more prevalent than what it used to be but that happens a lot now um so i'm not sh i don't know the end it just kind of left me a little uh eh, it took it down a, a a little half half a point or more for me for there but four strong wine glasses for the film and enjoy it. Enjoy the story. Enjoy the fashion. Zendaya was giving you everything that you needed. Like, the girl is just bad. She is just bad. Like, yes. Zendaya, um, and her acting was great. Like, I could see her playing different ways, roles. And she's one of those actors, she's still in that age frame where she could do flashbacks and be 19 and then update and be you know, the late 20s, early 30s character that she's playing. And I love to see it coming into the grown woman, Zendaya. So I look forward to more and more movies of this this type, exploring different roles with Zendaya to see what she might become, you know, as a superstar here in the acting game. But check it out. Go see it. Um, definitely. And let me know what you think. If you have seen it, any critiques that you have, you know, I didn't go by piece by piece of the movie and break it down certain scenes because I want y'all to enjoy it. And just say, like, it is a it is a well-crafted story um, where you get all elements of the relationship and what what's happened between the three of them. But with that said, thank you for watching. Check it out. Check out other things on the Parker Couch, you know, and... Hope to see you around soon, Tater Tots. Have a great weekend.